Okay, everyone, this is going to be a walkthrough of the I model for our Bio 137 lab. And what we can see here is the I model as it is fully intact. Uh, on the left, we're seeing a fully anterior view from the front. On the right here, we're seeing the medial aspect of the eye. So this is the side of the eye that's closest to the nose. So let's see what structures we can see in this view. So first, looking at the front of the eye, this clear structure, which we can also see right here, this is the cornea that covers the front of the eye. It also helps to hold some of the contents in that we'll talk about in just a little bit. Just behind that, the colored portion of the eye is called the retina. And the hole in the middle that lets light into the interior of the eye is called the pupil. Now, we can see in this front-on view, inside the pupil, uh, just behind it, is where the lens is, but we will see that a little bit better when we start looking at the interior of the eyeball. Now, there is some musculature of the eye that we need to know. So, first, we can see on the top, the superior rectus muscle. On the bottom, the inferior rectus muscle. On the medial side, there is the medial rectus muscle. And on the lateral side is the lateral rectus muscle. Now there is also a muscle that we can see a little bit better in this view that's also inferior, it's on the bottom surface of the eye, and it actually runs in the opposite direction from the inferior rectus muscle. The inferior rectus muscle attaches to the bottom front of the eye and goes towards the back. And right here in this view, we can see a portion of that inferior rectus muscle as it's running under the surface of the eye. But this other muscle, it actually attaches over here on the bottom of the lateral side of the eye and runs in this direction. This is called the inferior oblique muscle. Oblique means at an angle or diagonally, and it kind of runs a little bit diagonally like this. So how do I know which is the medial surface and the lateral surface of the eye? Because I've said that this is the medial rectus muscle, which is also what we see right here. This is the superior rectus muscle and the medial rectus muscle. So how do I know that this is medial and not lateral? Well, the easiest way, in my opinion, is to look at the superior surface of the eye, the top of the eye, and we can see that there is a tendon right here. This is called the superior oblique tendon. And this superior oblique tendon goes towards the nose. So this is the, whichever side that we see this tendon on is the medial side of the eye. So we can see the tendon here. If we saw the eye from the other side, we would not see it. So here, this is going towards the nose. This is the medial surface of the eye, which means that this is also the medial surface of the eye, making this the medial rectus muscle. And the muscle on the other side, which we can't see in this view, but it's this one right here, is the lateral rectus muscle. Now the white part of the eye this is called the sclera. The sclera is the white of the eye. Now in this view, we've dissected the eye. We can see inside and we've removed, and on this left image, we've removed the sclera. And we could see another structure that lies just beneath. Over here on the right, we've completely dissected the eye. We've even removed this portion and we can see the 
inside the hollow portion of the eye. So let's start over here on the left, uh, just to orient ourselves again. This is the superior uh, rectus muscle, the medial rectus muscle. There's that superior oblique tendon. Here again is the cornea. We can see the cornea right here. Here is the iris and the pupil. Now, just outside the iris, this structure is called ciliary muscle. When we look at the eye from the inside on the next slide, we will see the ciliary muscle from the inside. This layer that's just underneath the sclera is called the choroid. All of this dark brown area here, this is the choroid. Now running across the surface and through the choroid, we see these arteries, veins, and nerves. And what we call these are ciliary arteries, red, ciliary veins, blue, and ciliary nerves, yellow. And once we take the choroid off and we look at the hollow portion of the eye, which is what we see going on over here, we will see that it's filled with a couple of substances. One of those substances is a clear, thick liquid that's kind of like jello. That's really what this structure is representing. That's called the vitreous humor. And there is also a very, very watery liquid that really looks a lot like water called aqueous humor. For the most part, the vitreous humor fills the back portion of the eye and the aqueous humor fills the front portion of the eye, although there is some intermixing. So this large, clear, round structure right here, it doesn't represent another layer. Really, this represents that vitreous humor. Now, we can also see in this view the lens that sits just behind the pupil. So this is the lens. This is what focuses the light coming into your eye. Now, in this view, what I've done is removed that clear structure where the vitreous humor uh, was represented. And we're looking down from the superior portion of the eye down into the interior of the eye. So here is the cornea. Here is the lens. If we could see from the front, this is the iris and the pupil. Here is that medial rectus muscle and lateral rectus muscle. So that can kind of orient you with what we're really looking at here. Now this red structure right here, this is actually uh, that an extension of that ciliary muscle that we saw from the front. Really the ciliary muscle is this kind of stripey area right here. This is still a part of the ciliary muscle. It's actually got its own name. It's called the aura serrata, but that's not a structure you need to know in lab. So if you see this, it's really calling this the ciliary muscle, but that's also what this white area is right here. Now this large space right here, everything behind the lens is called the posterior compartment. Now the posterior compartment, like I said, everything behind the lens, this is where we would find the vitreous humor. Everything in front of the lens is called the anterior compartment. And this is where we would find the aqueous humor. But the anterior compartment actually gets a little bit uh, more divisive. There's, there's some smaller areas within the anterior compartment. Everything in front of the lens is the anterior compartment, but everything in front of the iris 
is the anterior chamber of the anterior compartment. And the very small space in between the lens and the iris is called the posterior chamber of the anterior compartment. I know that can get a little bit dicey, a little tricky. Just think, if it's behind the lens, it's the posterior compartment. If it's in front of the lens, it's the anterior chamber. But the anterior chamber has two sections separated by the iris. In front of the lens, behind the iris, is the posterior chamber of the anterior compartment. In front of the iris is the anterior chamber of the anterior compartment. So now we get back to this posterior chamber and look at some of the structures that we find here. Remember, this is all filled with that vitreous humor, that thick jelly-like liquid. We can see those ciliary arteries and ciliary veins, the red or the arteries, the blue or the veins. This tan area right here. Now it's not just on the bottom half that we're seeing. This would also be on the top half, but this is all the retina. This lighter tan area is the retina. Now the retina is full of very specialized nerve endings uh, that allow us to see. These are the light receptor nerve endings. And the retina all sends their signals, those action potentials that are developed, to this point right here. This is called the optic disc. And the optic disc is where the optic nerve connects to the retina. The optic nerve is this large structure that we see exiting the back of the eye, and that's what carries information from the eye about what we're seeing to the brain. This is the optic nerve. By the way, remember optic nerve, cranial nerve number two. But an interesting thing about the optic disc, there are no rods and cones, those specialized light receptor nerve endings. There are no rods and cones here. So this is also sometimes called the blind spot because when light hits right here, we don't see it. But our eye is constantly having small little movements and our brain does a little bit of modification to what we're seeing, we don't normally notice our blind spot. There are some tricks where you can actually find your blind spot, but just know the optic disc is also your blind spot. Okay, so that's the end of the walkthrough of the eye. There will be another walkthrough for the ear model, which is also in this same lab. All right, I will see you there.